Good evening. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all, Doctor. This man, Mr. Richardson, is a witness to the horrid affair at 29 Hanbury Street, the murder of Annie Chapman. We are discussing the relevance of his testimony. You're probably not in a position to discuss it with me, but I would like to know more about what you call the relevance of this young man's testimony. Oh, there's no secrecy. It's simply that the testimony given by Mr. Richardson doesn't match the time of death given by the coroner, Dr. Phillips. What was the time of death, according to him? Before half four in the morning. My conclusions were the same. Were there any other conflicting testimonies? Well, two other witnesses summoned at the preliminary inquest gave testimony, but in these cases too, the times don't match. Do you remember what it was they said? I didn't question them myself. A colleague of mine took down their statements on paper, but on deciding they were of little use, he tore them up and threw them in the bin. There's no point in being bogged down with useless paperwork. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. May I introduce myself? I'm Dr. Watson. I am... You wouldn't be the chap what writes the detective stories in that there paper? Well, yes, indeed, my stories have been published in the Strand. Go oh, blimey, wanna tell me, old mum? It would seem your testimony is the subject of some debate. Could you tell me what it was about? Ah, don't be telling you I'm a bit befuddled about the times that I told them. But it can't be so. I knows what I sees and what I don't sees that morning. What did you see, or what didn't you see? And at what time, would you say? I'll tell you this for nothing. It's me old mum who lives at the house where the body was found out back in the garden. She has her shop at the bottom to the right of the stairs. Her door was broken down not too far back because it's a real zoo it is. Right, the morning it happened, I head that way to see if me old mum has finally had the place broken into. It was caught to five when I got there. That I'll swear on me dear old mum's life. I had a look round to see if the cellar had been taken. No. I had a little sit down on the stairs by the courtyard, because me shoes were causing me no end of pain, and I had a cut and all. I didn't see a single thing below the steps, Doctor. Not one single thing. If there was some bird all covered in blood, taint no how I could have missed that, even if it were night time. Right. Five minutes after getting to number 29, I had to clip off. And now they tells me that either I can't tell time no more, or I was fixing me loafer next to a stiff that was still steaming. All right then, evening gents. Yes, Doctor? So, how far along are the investigations into these two recent murders? Everyone around here believes both crimes were committed by the same man. But as for the Hanbury Street and Bucks Row crimes, nobody has heard or seen a thing. By the way, have you heard of a Dr. Tumblety? Um, no. Is it important? Yes. Well, no, maybe. Actually, I don't know. I have heard about this man, his frequent nocturnal outings and bizarre behaviour. What does this chap look like, Doctor? And where can we find him? The last I heard was that he was staying at Finley's place, the man who was looking for me a few days ago. It would greatly assist us if you could ask Finley what your strange associate looks like. We could then see if the description matches any witness accounts. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. an old report on arrests that took place a few years earlier. Here are the ripped statements. I can piece them together again.
There, all done. Holmes couldn't have done better himself. Yes, Doctor. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. Good evening, Dr. Gibbons. Dr. Watson. Did you keep the cane we spoke of last time? I was going to sell it tomorrow, would you believe, having not heard word. Do you have any formalin here? No, definitely not. They have it in university hospitals to conserve anatomical specimens in jars. But in a little clinic like mine, we don't keep anything but bad memories. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. I must retrieve Sickert's cane at all costs. Good evening, Mr. Solomonovich. Good evening, Doctor. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you finished converting the harnesses? Yes, just now. I got a little behind because of all the commotion. Commotion? Don't you start. Three days ago, the very afternoon that you passed by, there was a chase throughout the neighborhood. Hundreds of people were chasing one man, claiming he was responsible for the murders these last few days. Schmontz! It was awful! I hope those maniacs didn't catch him. Better the police should. Tell me, did John Pizer turn himself in to the police? Things unfolded as they should. Look in the newspaper, the daily news from today. Farewell, Isaac. Goodbye, Doctor. What can I do for you, Doctor? Farewell, Isaac. Goodbye, Doctor. Out of the way, I don't like the look of you. Good evening, ma'am. Um, your door was open. Isn't that a little dangerous? Hello, Doctor. Don't worry, if the looks of anyone who enters doesn't please me, me and my pistol know how to convince them to leave. Do you happen to know Annie Chapman, the poor woman who was killed three days ago? Dark Annie? Like all the drifters in the area, I've seen her once or twice. With respect to the dead, Annie really was the bottom of the barrel. What do you mean? Well, in our profession, the pretty young ones go out when night has barely fallen and don't have a problem finding takers. But poor girls like Annie or Polly Nichols, who aren't as tender and are often sick, sometimes trudge around for a whole night in the cold and the rain before landing a client. And that doesn't help their appearances either. They don't have much choice about paying for a bed for a few hours, a glass of gin or a hot meal. How terribly sad. <sighs> That's the price of survival in Whitechapel, my angel. One of my girls knew Annie for some time. They bought some jewellery on the black market, I think. Jewellery? How could Annie Chapman have possibly afforded jewellery? <laughs> Luxuries for a woman are always relative to her condition, Doctor. 
As a matter of fact, it was real cheap junk. And he got three assorted brass rings, I think. <laughs> it's been said I have a memory for jewellery. How is Lucy keeping? She's doing well, Doctor. But believe me, it won't last. Rare are the girls who can build a future in our profession. Very well. I shall let you get back to work, Ma. See you soon, my love. Best not to stray off in that direction. Yes, Doctor? Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. I must retrieve Sickert's cane at all costs. Best not to stray off in that direction. Best not to stray off in... These paintings are suggestive at the very least. smell of gas. It seems to be coming from the abandoned building. Good evening, Finlay. How are you? Oh, good evening, Doctor. So-so. And you? It smells of gas here. Ah, you might say, Doctor. Without wanting to speak ill of the force, I have to wonder if the police are up to something. What do you mean? Well, I was outside yesterday evening when the light went out at my place, and a gas smell came from the abandoned building across from my place. And a minute later, the police arrived and were snooping all around like it was them who hit the gas before arriving. Have things sorted themselves out with your strange tenant? Don't talk about it, Doctor. That man is truly bizarre. He goes to the most sordid locations once night falls. Three days ago, my wife told me she saw him come in with blood-stained clothes and a fearsome look. Interesting. What does he look like, and how old is he? Oh, he's my age, give or take. So, the other side of 50. He's always dressed in a striking manner, with an American hat. He's big, close to 5'11", I'd say. He has a strange voice, not just his accent, see? His voice. Very well. Goodbye for now, Finlay. Goodbye, Doctor. Now then, let's go to the police station. Yes, Doctor? Here are your harnesses, Doctor. They are top quality, I'd say. Definitely worth the prize of this walking stick. Here, it's yours. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. I must go to Miss Bella's. You're still there, Doctor. I found the cane that was stolen from your client. Here it is. Doctor, you are a real saint, I can see that. I'll finally be able to present my bill to this damned painter. If by chance you see him, tell him that a little surprise awaits him here. You told me you would give me some information on this Dr. Tumblety. 
Agreed. He's a Canadian or an American. He parades from time to time through the neighbourhood in a 50-guinea suit and acts like a doctor. But for business, he isn't worth it. This damn Yankee hates women. The few times that he was approached by the girls, he spit on them, all the while hurling insults. It would seem that he was hunting for the bad boys. He's looking for trouble, that animal. Does he frequent any pub in particular? Aye, the wasp's nest on Burner Street, I think. A seedy spot, even by our standards. Very well, I shall let you get back to work, Ma. See you soon, my love. <laughs> The Wasp's Nest. This pub looks even more disreputable than the Golden Lion in Baker Street. Good evening. Would you happen to have seen a Dr. Tumblety, a man of a certain age dressed in a flamboyant manner? If you're looking for some company, Gov, you've come to the wrong place. Me? I'm just here to pour. I don't care who you is, I knows nothing and I don't care neither. Greetings, my good man. Could I have a pint? Here, Gov. I've been told that Dr. Tumblety might be found around here. Is that so? I don't do a roll call of all the drunkards here. I've got my hands full just making sure I get their money. Don't people pay when they order? Nah, look at that little scribbler there. Completely dead drunk. Tonight's tally is about as long as his arm. If he skips out, I'll be in for a guinea almost. Goodbye, my friend. Oi, that's it. Good evening, sir. It'll be the cool of my career, Governor said. Ha! <laughs> You'll make loads of dots of the paper, he said. You're a journalist? That's so. Tom Bulling at your service. <laughs> The Whitechapel ferret, the wizard with the scoop. You don't appear to be in a state to write anything, my friend. You're mistaken. Whiskey passes through the blood and turns into ink. Simple. <laughs> you see, mugs and inkwells are all the same. Don't you think you should settle your tab and go home? My red ink? Where's my red ink? I won't even pay half a halfpenny if they don't return my red ink. It's my blood you hear. Very well, I'll be on my way. <coughs> Good evening, sir. Well, I know you. Why? We met at Miss Poolman's the other day. So you've come to slum it in Whitechapel, eh? Do you know Dr. Tumblety, a Canadian or American chap? Quite an extravagant dresser. Frequents this pub now and then. Are you intimate? Um, no. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I just wanted to prove my discretion concerning this man. In so much and so far as I know him. You wouldn't like it if one day the tables were turned and everyone was talking about why you were in the borough. Isn't that so? As it happens, I saw Miss Pullman recently. She told me that she couldn't wait to see you again. She said something about a surprise that is waiting for you at her establishment. Why, that is some of the best news I've heard, my friend. As thanks, I would like to let you in on a secret. The man that you were talking about, and whom I happen to know by sight, passed by and went through that little door that you see over there. Another man let him in. They weren't together for more than a few minutes, to be sure, eh? Well, I will continue my search. Ah, love. But what is this person trying to imply? This matter is beyond me. This is the sink where the barmaid puts the glasses to soak. Look, red ink. What's that doing here? The bottle is closed. There must still be some ink inside, and it looks like a glass. The barmaid must have put ink into the sink by mistake. Right. Do I get in your way? Me? If you'll excuse me, sir. 
You're the best. The boss told me. My reading. Well, where's she be? I found your red ink, my friend. You should settle up and head home. Thank you, my friend, thank you. The spring-heeled phantom will be revived. Gav? Here you go. It's on the journalist, my friend. I owe you one. The next one is on me. What'll it be? Nothing, thanks. But I may need your help. Listen, my friend, I would like you to let me in the door over there. You're a bobby. A peeler? Absolutely not, my friend. I am a doctor. Fine. I owe you this, at least. There's a bloke behind that door there. No pity Bluto. Let's just say he wants to lay low for a moment. So I don't think he'll be opening the door just now. Unless... Tell him you have word from Squibby. That'll open the door. But who can say what'll happen when the door closes? Goodbye, my friend. Oi! That's it! Let me in. I... I have news from Squibby. But stay calm. And who are you? Where's Squibby? He's out. To be honest, I don't actually know this squibby chap. I was actually wondering if you knew Dr. Tumblety, a Canadian or American fellow. He came in... Sure we know him. Excellent. Can you... You know about gas? I'm afraid not. I am a doctor. Then I ain't interested. You can be leaving now. But if I find out who snitched to the peelers, I'll find you. Got it? But I can pay you for... Keep your coins for the paupers, or one of the gas boys who ain't afraid of nothing and knows how to hold his tongue. You bring him to me, I'll meet with you. Yes, Doctor. Tumblety is a man around 5 foot 11, about 55 years old, extravagantly dressed and with a rather distinctive voice. He boards at Finley's. You should know where that is, as the police were there only yesterday. Their arrival coincided with a strange gas leak. Ah, yes, I know where you mean. Indeed, there was an odd affair with the gas. It was rather unsettling. We were searching for a well-known scoundrel who was ratted out by Squibby, the chap we followed and saved from the pack a few days ago. This thug, no pity Bluto, must have been in the abandoned building in question. But there was no sign of him when we arrived. Furthermore, an inspector said that, given the smell, the thingamabob that supplies gas to the building was probably damaged. So we took no risks and were called away somewhere else. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. Yes, Doctor? Could you tell me what type of pill this is? Yes, we have those here. It's not really a medication. We give them to patients with chronic respiratory conditions like tuberculosis. Did you have a patient by the name of Annie Chapman? The woman killed three days ago. Indeed. She came in the morning of her death. Poor woman. Did you give her these pills? Yes, now that I think of it. She actually came in twice. The first time I gave her an almost empty container without making her pay. She came back during the day and said she dropped the container and stepped on the pills. She wanted to know if I could give her more again without paying. I refused. After she left, a patient who was there told me that he lives at the same place and confided that she had been lying. He saw the pills fall in the tenement's communal kitchen, but the woman immediately wrapped them up in a piece of paper. Where did this paper come from? 
According to this man, she'd found it near the chimney in the kitchen. Anyone could have thrown that paper there. That envelope can't have anything to do with the murder. Pardon, Doctor? Uh, nothing. I was just talking to myself. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. Well, it would seem that I have all the information I need for my investigation. Anyway, this fellow Bluto at the Wasp's Nest is rather shady and doesn't look like he'll want to cooperate. I'd be better off returning to Baker Street. Holmes will certainly know what to do. And besides, I am worn out. <laughs>